Week 13 is officially here. And today, I got you guys covered with my top wide receiver rankings in the tier list form. And I give you guys every week going through my wide receiver ones, my wide receiver twos, my wide receiver threes, and my favorite flex plays entering week 13 of fantasy football. There will be a little surprise at the end of this video. So make sure you tune along. Had to give you guys some extra value, but... It's crunch time, man. We need to be booking our playoff spots, and I got you guys covered. But before we go into the official rankings, we go through the will they play tier, and there are two names on the will they play tier this week that are true questionables entering the weekend. Devontae Smith of the Philadelphia Eagles and Keon Coleman of the Buffalo Bills. For Devontae Smith, he missed last game with his hamstring injury, and while he is deemed a true questionable by the team, Dr. Jesse Morse does expect him to play in this game. It is about a 4.30 p.m. Eastern time kickoff, so you will know you'll have alternative options if he does not go, but it does sound like he will play in this game. Devontae Smith, if he does go, top 20 to 25 level wide receiver in my rankings. And the other name that's a true questionable this week is Keon Coleman, wide receiver of the Buffalo Bills. He does play on Sunday night football, so if you are planning to start him, make sure you have a pivot both on Sunday night or potentially on that Monday night game. And if he does go, he is a top 40 level wide receiver play for me. As but moving on to the official top 12, we start off with my beloved Nico Collins of the Houston Texans. He comes in at number one this week, 23.75 implied Houston points on the road against Jacksonville. And with Nico Collins, man, he has been absolutely dominant in the games he's played above 50% of the snaps this year, over 22 PPR points per game in that stretch. And he finished with 20.2 PPR points in his first game fully back last week, returned the week before with 47% of the snaps. We saw consistent snaps from Nico Collins this past week. And he returned, like I said, 20.2 PPR points, had a 33-yard touchdown call back. That is the level of upside we get from Nico on a week-to-week -week basis. Now he enters the second easiest matchup for wide receivers this year. Jacksonville can't stop anything on their back end. And we saw Nico Collins score 33.1 against this exact defense earlier on in the season. So with Nico Collins, there's a very real possibility we could even see him... There's a very real possibility we can even see him improve on those numbers, a la what Jamar Chase did to the Baltimore Ravens. We have spike week in store. I think there's a possibility Nico Collins scores 35-plus PPR points this week, which is why he ranks for me at number one. But coming in just behind him at number two, we have A.J. Brown of the Philadelphia Eagles, 24 implied Eagles points on the road against Baltimore this week. And speaking of Jamar Chase, I mean, this is the exact defense we saw Jamar Chase score over 50 PPR points just a few weeks ago. This sets AJ up to potentially have a big time spike week in this matchup. Ravens are the aforementioned easiest matchup for opposing wide receivers this year. And AJB, as we know, has that big play upside, yards after catch upside to really make them pay in this game. The passing volume could be a concern. We haven't really seen this passing offense from the Eagles. Jalen Hurts overall throw the football a ton as of late. However, this is a pass funnel matchup. This is a close competitive shootout game script. And there's a real possibility we see AJ Brown scorcher. But coming in at number three and nine, we have Jamar Chase and George Pickens both playing against each other this week. Big time divisional affair. Cincinnati hosting the Pittsburgh Steelers. We have Cincinnati implied for 25.75 points. The Steelers implied for 22.25. So it's really an interesting matchup. I mean, if I told you going into the year that the eight and three Steelers would be taken on the four and seven Bengals, I don't think anybody would have believed me, but that's exactly where we are in 2024. This is the fifth highest over under the slate at 47 points. And both offenses have played extremely well as of late. Chase does have a difficult matchup going up against a run funnel Steelers defense, but with the way he and Burrow have been playing all year, I think there's an opportunity for him to hit a ceiling week. He saw a top three overall wide receiver for me this week. He saw the wide receiver one overall in fantasy. So I'm sure this doesn't come as a shock, but you are absolutely blasting Jamar Chase into your lineup. But on the flip side, we do have George Pickens of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He has been dominant as of late ever since Russell Wilson has taken over and has a much more favorable matchup against the Cincinnati defense. Uh, Pickens has commanded 30% of the team targets and 46% of the team area yards since Russ has taken over. And in that stretch has averaged over 15.9 PPR points per game. If you took his points per game in that stretch, it would equate out to the wide receiver 12 overall in the year. George Pickens is playing great ball, fifth easiest matchup for wide receivers, and I expect the Steelers to air it out on Sunday. But moving on to four and seven, we have Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup of the Los Angeles Rams, 26 implied road points for the Rams against the Saints this week. And with both these guys, I mean, obviously they're yin and yang, they're apples and oranges. I mean, pick which one you want, pick which flavor you like between these Rams wide receivers. They are both elite options, do not get me wrong. However, I do think we've seen Puka slightly separate from Cooper Cup as of late getting that prime usage. While I do obviously still love Cup's versatility, that cheap motion, yards after catch ability, has shown that touchdown equity as of late, 
Puka Nakua has been treated as this team's wide receiver one. 36 targets in his last three games. He's looked phenomenal. And both these guys are elite assets. But with the way Puka has played, I think he can challenge top three to five wide receiver status. And moving on to six and eight, both these guys actually already played in their Thanksgiving games. Amon or St. Brown, wide receiver of the Detroit Lions. CeeDee Lamb of my beloved Dallas Cowboys. Chicago obviously took on the Detroit Lions. And of course, my Cowboys took on the Giants this week. Amon or finished seven targets, five receptions, 72 receiving yards, and 12.2 PPR points. And we have Unfortunately, had a down game from C.D. Lamb, six targets, two receptions, 39 receiving yards, and only 5.9 PPR points. It's unfortunate. I mean, a modern St. Brown didn't hit a ceiling week, and then you have on the flip side here with C.D. Lamb getting hurt in that game. So you really wanted more from your studs at this point of the season, knowing that you have to clinch, but it is unfortunate that they were not able to get the job done. We move on to wide receiver 10, however, and this is a guy I absolutely think is going to get the job done this week. We have Drake London of the Atlanta Falcons, 23.25 implied Falcons points, hosting the LA Chargers this week. And with Drake London, he is the wide receiver 14 in PPR points per game on the season, and he is the wide receiver eight in total points. London has just flat out been great this year. He's taken the step everybody wanted him to take. He looks like that good, efficient, young wide receiver we were hoping for and that really bodes well in terms of this potential game environment extreme pass funnel chargers defense 48 implied over under game Vegas expects points to be scored in bunches, and ultimately, I think this could be one of the shootouts of the slate. But moving on to number 11, we have Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 26 implied Bucks points on the road against Carolina this week. And with Mike Evans, he returned from his hamstring injury last week to the tune of 60% of the snaps, 11.8 PPR points. And I think with his role expected to increase to a full-time role this week, we have the opportunity to see a big time spike week for Big Mike. I mean, he currently needs 600 receiving yards in his last six games this year to continue his 1K streak. And I think we see him unleashed without Godwin on the field. There's a real opportunity. Mike Evans is one of the biggest league winners down the stretch. And then my final wide receiver one, I have Garrett Wilson of the New York Jets hosting the Seattle Seahawks this week. And with Garrett Wilson, nearly 10 targets per game in the wide receiver 12 in PPR points per game on the year. He's a very similar profile to Drake London, but I do prefer the game environment for London this week against the Chargers. Wilson has struggled in these last few games, but he did have a stretch of five games before that, averaging 22.64 PPR points per game. He's getting the volume, just need a more efficient link up between him and Rodgers moving forward. But you need to start these guys like I mentioned in the top, so now let's focus some more time covering those wide receivers 13 to 36. And if you guys want access to all of our weekly rankings throughout the playoff weeks, it's crunch time. You need to win every week going forward. There is one of two ways to access our weekly rankings manifesto. First way, underdog fantasy promo code FSE. Sign up and first deposit at least $10. You make one play on the site. You will get access to those rankings in those pivotal playoff weeks. And the other way is by going over to flockfantasy.com. Promo code FSE will get you 30% off of any site-wide package, as well as a seven-day free trial on the site. Those are the two ways to get access to the single best resource for fantasy football to help you guys win your championships, and that is our weekly rankings manifesto. Now moving on to the high-end wide receiver twos we saw from the Malik Neighbors, who also played on Thanksgiving. I already talked about CeeDee Lamb. I already talked about Amon or St. Brown. With Malik Neighbors, very solid game, you know, high-end wide receiver two type of game, which is where I ranked him. 13 targets, 8 receptions, 69 receiving yards, and no receiving touchdowns. Ended up finishing with 14.9 PPR points. Sure, maybe you wanted 20 plus, maybe you wanted 25 plus, but I think you'll take a 14.9 Thursday game outing. Going on to wide receiver 14, we have Brian Thomas Jr. of the Jacksonville Jaguars. A couple rookies in a row here, obviously Malik Neighbors at 13 there. 20.25 implied Jaguars points at home against the Texans. I already talked about Nico Collins on the other side, but Brian Thomas Jr., I've called him baby Nico all season long. And as long as Trevor Lawrence is playing in this game, I think we need to be considering him a top 15 wide receiver. The expectation is that Trevor Lawrence is back this week. And before his injury in week nine, Brian Thomas Jr. was averaging over 15 PPR points per game in his rookie campaign. His numbers have tailed off with T-Law banged up, but I think we finally start to see him getting back to that status he was in the midseason where people were talking about him as a potential first-round dynasty pick. And coming in at number 15 for me is Jackson Smith and Jigba of the Seattle Seahawks. 21.25 implied Seahawks points on the road against the Jets this week. And JSN is kind of the anti-BTJ uh, in multiple ways. Like on one hand with BTJ, you got that size, the speed, the freak athlete on the boundary. On the other hand with JSN, you have more of that slot, a modern St. Brown archetype. And the other parallel is that Brian Thomas Jr. obviously having his big time stretch early to mid portion of the year. JSN, though, in these last few weeks has been an absolute wide receiver one. And not only a wide receiver one, he has been a legit elite wide receiver since week eight. 
in that stretch since week eight, 26% targets per route run, 32% of the team targets, 46% of the air yards, and over 22.8 PPR points per game. He has been on fire, and at first I was skeptical. I'm like, okay, this is happening a little bit with DK Metcalf out of the lineup. Once DK's back, we'll start to see JSN relegated back to that early season role, but that just simply hasn't happened. Even with DK on the field, JSN looks like a stud. JSN looks like the JSN we pictured him coming into the season. So I don't know if it was him potentially getting used to the NFL speeds and it just clicked. I don't know what the case was, but I'm just glad we're starting to see JSN play this level because I'm sure if you guys have been watching these wide receiver rankings every week, I've talked some bad on JSN. I'm going to eat my crow. I was high on him entering the year, and it finally looks like he's starting to take those strides as a player to be a consistent top-end option, which is why he ranks inside my top 15. And speaking of high-end option, that's exactly what Cortland Sutton has been in these last five games. 20.78 PPR points per game in that stretch, and now gets a top 10 matchup with a solid 23.5 implied Broncos points. With Cortland Sutton, I mean, 16 does feel a little bit low considering how well he's played as of late, but there are a ton of great wide receiver options this week, and Cortland sudden is absolutely one of them i think you can argue him all the way up to like 10 11 12 this week because that is how good sutton has been playing this offense Bo Nux looks like a potential offensive rookie of the year. And Sean Payton is bringing stability schematically. So I'm very intrigued by Cortland Sutton moving forward. But moving on to wide receiver 17 for me this week is Lad McConkey of the LA Chargers. Over 24 implied Chargers points on the road against the Falcons. And with Lad McConkey, he's established himself as that clear-cut number one wide receiver for Justin Herbert. And despite a down game from the offense as a whole against Baltimore, we saw that Herbert-Lad connection thrive in a big way. Six catches, 83 receiving yards, looking good, looking efficient. He's played in that Keenan Allen role, except he also offers 4-3-9 speed to work both vertically and after the catch. So with Lab McConkey, just a very good, very sound football player, and now you're putting him in a great game environment against Atlanta. We love this spot. Moving on to wide receiver 18 for me this week, we have Calvin Ridley of the Tennessee Titans. 19.25 implied Titans points against Washington, and with Calvin Ridley, he has a 25% seasonal target share. And we're starting to finally see him put it together in these last five games. 17.28 PPR points per game. And Will Levis is starting to click at that quarterback position. The matchup is solid. And with how Calvin really has been playing, he needs to be started with top 20 level expectations. This is still extremely strong volume. And I trust Calvin really as a wide receiver two until he proves me otherwise. But moving on to the low end wide receiver twos, we have T Higgins of the Cincinnati Bengals. 25.75 implied Bengals points. And he is expected to see shadow covers from Joey Porter in this game. But but honestly, for Higgins, with the way he's been playing, there's no cornerback matchup that I truly fear at this point. With T. Higgins this year, he has been absolutely phenomenal. In fact, on a per-game basis, he is having his best season in the NFL. He is currently the wide receiver four in PPR points per game, averaging 18.5. And he has two 20-plus point games and has scored 10-plus points in five of his six games this year. But with how this Bengals offense has been playing and with how Burrow and Higgins themselves have been playing... I am trusting this offense every single week. Doesn't matter who they play. But 20, I had Tyree Kill of the Miami Dolphins, who obviously also played on Thanksgiving that night game. And it was a slow burn for Tyree Kill. Like, I'm not going to lie. You, those of you that follow the Flock League will know, I have Tyree Kill in the Flock League. And it was looking like stark times. I mean, we'll talk about the other Packers players in a second because I also played against them in this matchup. But with Tyree Kill, he had two catches for four yards with five minutes left in the fourth quarter. And he ended up finishing with nine targets, six receptions, 83 yards, and that tipped receiving touchdown. I mean, when he caught that tipped touchdown, when Jonu deflected that up, Tyreek Hill was able to bring that down, and he finished with 20.3 PPR points. If you guys know how the Packers played at the early portion of the game, I did not think I had a chance to leave that slate with my sanity. But moving on to wide receiver 21, we have DK Metcalf of the Seattle Seahawks. He is seeing the toughest matchup on the field, expected shadow coverage against Sauce Gardner in this game. And with how JSN has played as of late, I do think he has to be ranked number two of the Seahawks wide receivers. However, with DK Metcalf, we know he still brings to the table. I still really like him. Size, speed, good offensive projection, good usage. DK Metcalf is still a stud, do not get me wrong. But at this point, with how JSN has been playing as of late, it would be take lock to rank him above JSN. But moving on to wide receiver 22, we have Terry McLaurin of the Washington Commanders. 25.25 implied Commanders points hosting the Tennessee Titans this week. But Terry McLaurin, he did have his day bailed out by a big 86-yard touchdown last week. I saw that. I watched the whole game. Obviously, I'm a big Cowboys fan. We had him in check. 
And then that broken play 86-yard touchdown, I'm sure those of you who played against him will know how infuriating that was, including myself personally. But Terry McLaurin, this is a very interesting matchup against Tennessee. Like on one hand, Tennessee has been very good against opposing wide receivers this year. But on the other hand, we have Washington implied for over 25 home points. However, the Sharps are all over the under in this game, and I do tend to agree this is one of the slower paced games of the entire slate. And both offenses have played extremely sloppy football at times in recent weeks. But moving on to wide receiver 23, we have Zay Flowers of the Baltimore Ravens, 27 implied Ravens points hosting the Eagles this week. And with Zay Flowers, I mean, on one hand, obviously, Philly has been phenomenal against opposing wide receivers this year. Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, improved back end. Vic Fangio changing the scheme. They've been very good against wide receivers. So I want to give them their flowers. Again, I fucking hate them. Don't get me wrong. I hate the Eagles. But at the same time, their defense has been extremely good as of late. But on the other hand, I mean, the Ravens are implied for 27 points at home. This is the highest over-under of the entire slate. And these Sharps are hammering the over in this game. So although it is a tough matchup, the Eagles do very well against opposing wide receivers. Given the overall game environment, given the overall shootout nature we could potentially see... I'm very intrigued by the ceiling of Zay Flowers this week. He has been extremely volatile this year, but like I said, the ceiling is too tantalizing not to get in chair lineups, and he has the makings, like I said, of a shootout game environment. So with Zay Flowers, fire him up with wide receiver two confidence, but he has the upside to be even higher than this. Coming at 24, we have Devontae Adams of the New York Jets, 20.75 implied Jets points. He's been very up and down since joining the Jets, but he has commanded consistent volume from Aaron Rodgers as of late, and this offense is very consolidated down to him. Garrett Wilson and Brace Hall in the receiving game. And the pros and cons of this matchup are very apparent. Like on one hand, Seattle is ranked as a favorable matchup. This is a fast-paced projected game. But on the other hand, this is the lowest over-under of the slate. And the Jets are implied for one of the fewest totals of the week. So with Devontae Adams, there are pros and cons. But trusting the volume is a good bet to make for him this week. But moving on to the wide receiver threes, we have DJ Moore and Jamison Williams coming at 25 and 29. Obviously already played on that Thanksgiving game. DJ Moore, huge game. I mean, especially in the second half, Caleb Williams really figured it out. That Bears offense really took a step up. He finished with 16 targets. Yes, you heard that correctly. 16 targets, 8 receptions, 97 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown, 23.7 PPR points. That is the type of bounce back week I have been waiting for for DJ Moore. And if he continues playing like that, he can establish himself as a mid-range wide receiver too. On the flip side with Jameson Williams, 7 targets, 5 receptions, 28 receiving yards, also added an 18-yard rush, and he finished with 9.6 PPR points. Coming in at 26, we have Tank Dell of the Houston Texans, 23.75 implied Texans points. And with Tank Dell, he has been the big play threat for this Texans offense, and now gets a very advantageous matchup against Jacksonville. Houston implied for 20. 3.75 points. Dell, of course, we know can win deep on those PA crossers. And although he has been volatile as of late, I think this is the get right of all get right spots. Play action pass, 75 yard touchdown. Book it this week for Tank Dell. And at 27, we have Marvin Harrison Jr. of the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, 20.75 implied Cardinals points. And it's disappointing for me to have to rank him here, but that's exactly what he has been this year. It's been a high-end, volatile wide receiver three, and we have seen the highs and lows across Marv's rookie season. I want to believe that he can stack these performances more consistently because if he does, he'd be a clear-cut top 15 level wide receiver based off the usage. But with Marvin Harrison Jr., he just simply has not been playing his best ball. He is a rookie. It is a learning curve. I understand that. It just has been disappointing if you did draft Marvin Harrison on the one-two turn, which is something I was advocating for, knowing the level of prospect he was coming out. Just unfortunate. He hasn't really adapted to the game like a guy like Malik Neighbors has. And then wide receivers 28 and 30 also have already played this week. We had Jaden Reed playing on the Thanksgiving Thursday game, and we had Jacoby Myers playing on the Black Friday game. Jaden Reed, obviously, this was the guy I was talking about earlier when I talked about Tyree Kill. For the record, I had Tyree Kill. I was playing against the Jordan Love Jaden Reed stack, so you can imagine my feeling. Tyree Kill's not doing anything all game, and then Jaden Reed and Jordan Love connect for two touchdowns in like the first 15 minutes. I was scared, man. I didn't think I was going to be able to make it out of that slate alive, but luckily Tyree keyed it up. Luckily, Jaden Reed didn't really do much more after that. He ended up finishing six targets, three receptions, 24 receiving yards. He did add those two receiving touchdowns, and he also added a 23-yard rush. Grand total, 19.7 PPR points. If you were to tell me that Tyreek Hill was going to outscore him after that first quarter, I would not have believed you. And on the flip side here with Jacoby Myers, we also had a big-time performance for him. 
11 targets, 6 receptions, 97 receiving yards, and 15.7 PPR points. Very, very good showing for a guy I had ranked at number 30 this week. But moving on to the flex place, we start off with number 31, Darnell Mooney of the Atlanta Falcons. 23.25 implied Falcons points at home against the Chargers this week. And with Darnell Mooney, this is a great game environment for him to crush. Coming off of the injury report with multiple injuries, I believe it was an Achilles and a hamstring he was dealing with. He is off the injury report. He is set to be at full go for this week. This is a great game environment for him. Like I mentioned, the Chargers are a pass funnel defense, and this profiles into a potential shootout script this week. And we have seen from Darnell Mooney that he can win deep consistently, and I expect him to continue where he left off prior to the injury. I mean, he's been phenomenal all year, and I really do feel like 31 may even be low for him entering the week. He's baking in a little bit of risk coming off of the injury scare. And then at 32, 33, and 35 grouped together here, we have the Sunday night football matchup itself. We have the San Francisco 49ers traveling to Buffalo, traveling to Orchard Park to take on the Buffalo Bills. And at 32, I have Jawan Jennings. At 33, I have Khalil Shakir. And at 35, I have Debo Samuel. So on the 49ers front, with Purdy expected to play, I do have to have the 49ers in my top 36 rankings. But that doesn't completely absolve the concern I have for this team. Trent Williams is out for this game. We have seen their offense play completely different football, whether he's on or off the field. And I am a little bit concerned. However, it is still Shanahan. They do have their starting quarterback. I'm trusting that process, especially knowing the spike week potential that Jawan Jennings and Debo Samuel bring to the table. But I am very cautious. I think if you want to start them with mid wide receiver three expectation, that's fine. But given the fact that they've been expected to be, you know, wide receiver twos in the past, I am concerned about their overall standing at this point. Also, on top of that, how healthy is Purdy? Even if he does play, I mean, he wasn't able to throw a football like two days ago. That's another concern for me this week. So the vibes that I'm getting from San Francisco right now don't really add up to having them any higher than this. But given their merit, given the spike weeks we've seen, they have to be inside the top 36. But 34 and 36 also already played on the Thanksgiving slate. Keenan Allen was at my 34 spot. Eight targets, five receptions, 73 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns. 24.3 PPR points. Great showing from Keenan Allen. He has to be ranked above Romo Dunze for the time being, considering the stark difference in play as of late. And on the other side with Jalen Waddle as well, four targets, four receptions, 53 receiving yards, 9.3 PPR points. And, and it's unfortunate with Waddle. We obviously saw what the spike week looked like last week with a big time performance, but we have seen him kind of crash back down to earth. I don't know what to expect from Waddle moving forward. I think boom bust wide receiver three though is the appropriate tag for what he's been able to do. But moving on to the deep league flex plays, and this was a surprise I was alluding to at the top of the video because so many players already played on Thursday already played on Friday instead of the initial top 36 I usually give you guys I'll throw a few more names on for you guys going to my top 42 wide receivers that I had coming into the week so 37 and 38 also already played Xavier Worthy and DeAndre Hopkins were the seven targets five receptions 54 receiving yards 10.4 PPR points and then we have Hopkins on the other hand nine targets four receptions 90 receiving yards 13 PPR points. Really solid performance, especially with flex level expectations if they were both in your lineup in PPR leagues. Now let's rapid fire these last four names. Jordan Asin and the Minnesota Vikings. We saw what the spike week looks like last week. Another potential favorable game environment. I am trusting him with wide receiver four expectation. Jerry Judy of the Cleveland Browns, 18 implied Browns points this week. Cleveland taking on the Denver Broncos. I would have him higher normally, but I do want to give my flowers to Pat Sertan. However, with no Cedric Tillman in the lineup, we could see a ton of volume go Jerry Judy's way. Nick Westbrook-Akine, been on an absolute touchdown tear, advantageous matchup against Washington. We are firing him up with wide receiver four expectations as long as he continues showing this level of touchdown equity. And then finally wrapping up the video, we have Amari Cooper of the Buffalo Bills. Over 25 implied Bills points. Amari Cooper, a little bit of an unknown right now. However, we do know what his talent level is. And, and after the bye week getting fully healthy, I think we could potentially see Amari Cooper scale up moving forward. But either way, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like down below. Comment your biggest start to decision. I'll try to get to as many as possible. And of course, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We are on the road to 60,000 subscribers. I appreciate you guys for that continued support. Like I mentioned in the middle of the video, if you want access to our weekly rankings manifesto, there's one of two ways to get that right now. First way, Underdog Fantasy, promo code FSC. Sign up and first deposit at least $10. You make one play on the site. You will get access to all of those rankings moving forward each and every week through the fantasy football playoffs. And the other way is by going over to flockfancy.com. By using promo code FSC, you will get 30% off any site-wide package as well as a seven-day free trial on the site. But with that being said, peace out. Good luck in your matchups. It is crunch time. We need to eat those Ws, baby.